Hello everyone once again. I think we can start. So here is the webinar for all international applicants who applied to HC St. Petersburg, both masters and bachelors. My name is Ksenia. I'm graduate admissions coordinator. Yes, and my name is Arina, and I'm undergraduate admissions coordinator. So today we will have a webinar for you about uh, some steps for your comfortable arrival in Russia and what you need to do before your arrival um, in HEC. So you can write your questions in the chat and we will answer them after um, our part of the webinar. After that, we will have our colleague Irene uh, from uh, Student Adaptation Office and she will tell you more about the Russia itself, what you need to bring with you um, mm -hmm. to feel comfortable here. Okay, so right now I will put the demonstration of our presentation. Um, do you see it? Please write us in the chat that everything is visible. Yes, okay, great. So right now we can start. Um, so yes, let's talk about pre-arrival pre preparation. Um, first of all, uh, it is crucial to understand whether you enrolled already in HEC University or not. So to get in the list of admitted students, first of all, you need to done your recognition uh, procedures in your HEC applicants account. I know that most of you uh, have already done it, which is perfect. And most of you have already um, listed in our admission lists, which are published on the site and which you actually can check via QR codes, which you see uh, at the bottom of the slide. Um, so if you are not done with the recognition yet, please do it. It is essential for us to enroll you, to actually enroll you. Um, if you um, right now are doing your recognition, after it is complete, please move to the enrollment section, enrollment documents in your personal account and submit documents that are, that, that are listed there. Uh, you will have all templates uh, uh, shown, so there won't be any problems, I guess. After your enrollment documents are successfully approved by us, you will find your name in the list of admitted students uh, on the website, which I already mentioned. Actually, right now we post your um, HEC registration number, not actually your name. So if you do not know your HEC registration number, just write to our email and we will send it to you. But I think it is quite visible in your personal account. Uh, whether, you will, whether you have some questions about your recognition steps, here is uh, we post recognition department email. You can write to them and um, just ask Clarify yeah, just to clarify some details about your recognition. Okay, so moving on. Uh, yes, the very popular question is about Russian student visa. So let me just explain it to you one more time. So we have two types of student visa, one for state funded place, uh, meaning students who receive Russian government scholarship who um, does not pay for the education. And the second type of visa for fee paying student. Uh, so let me just go one by one. So if you have Russian government scholarship, firstly, congratulations. Uh, for the scholarship holders, the visa invitation is prepared by the Ministry of Education and Science in Russia. It means that we as HSC University cannot uh, anyhow uh, involved in this process, we cannot, we cannot um, make it faster um, because it is only up to the ministry workers. Um, what, but what we can tell you is that your visa referral number, whether it's already uh, ready or will be, um, it will be available on your personal page on Russia Yedu Minobrnauki uh, website. 
I post a QR code for you to visit this uh, Russia Yedu website. Every scholarship holders must have uh, a profile there. The letter with your login and password were already sent to you. Uh, I think in March or April, it was like an automatic mailing with all your uh, login and password. If you cannot find it, it means that it may be in your spam, but you must have received it. It was automatically for all scholarship holders. But if you do not know how you log in your Russia Yedem Nauki website profile, right now it is not so necessary. You can check your visa status if you go uh, through this QR code and post there, uh, just uh, enter there your Russia Yedu number. It is goes uh, usually with the three first letter of your country and after that your numbers slash 24 and your email uh, you enter captcha and after that you will see your profile there and uh, your visa status if you do not know your russia yedu number write to our general email i admissions and i will send it to you so after you find your visa referral number uh, you need to visit the Russian embassy in your city, which you stated earlier, as a visa receiving place, just to, uh, just to issue your student visa there. With this referral number, it is enough to only have it. Uh, if your visa referral number is not ready, just kindly wait for it. As I mentioned earlier, we cannot push this process through because it is only up to the ministry workers. Visa referral number will appear to everyone's scholarship holders. Please don't worry. Uh, just kindly wait for it. If you understand that it is already uh, mid of August or already 20th of August and you do not know, you, you haven't received your number, visa referral number, write to us directly. And the next process uh, for fee paying play students. So your visa is prepared by us. Uh, after the study contracts payment confirmation, uh, as we receive it, and after your recognition is complete, we will send it to you some instructions uh, about visa document preparations. And after that, we will proceed this um, visa this visa process uh, usually the visa is making like from 20 to 30 days so the faster you pay uh, the faster we receive the payment information from you the faster the visa process will start so it's uh, actually in your interest to um, make the process smooth okay moving forward so when you receive your visa and you already booked your flight tickets and you arrive in Russia, what you need to do, please pay attention, pay attention to this very slide because it is quite important to understand the migration procedures for you as a foreigner student. So on the day of your arrival in Russia, you have to send uh, the following documents. It is scanned copies of all your passport pages, including the empty ones, Scan copy of your migration card, which you received uh, at the airport or wherever you arrive in Russia. Scan copy of the letterhead of registration in Russia, both sides, if you have it. For example, if you uh, live in a private address. And you need to mail this document, as you see, to the migration SPB at hc.ru. This is the email of our migration department. You need to specify your full name, your Russian telephone number, if you have it already, and the actual address of residence in St. Petersburg. And um, with this QR code, you can uh, read more thoroughly about uh, what migration procedures you need to follow if you live in HEC dormitory or at the private accommodation. 
Uh, talking about accommodation referral to the dormitory, um, accommodation referral will be sent to you by our accommodation department. Uh, it will be sent via your email. So kindly uh, make sure that you check your emails regularly. Um, the most important thing here to, is to understand that check-in starts on August 28. So we cannot check in you earlier. It is not possible. The check-in starts on 28 of August only. The list of documents required for the dormitory check-in, uh, it's actually already forwarded you by, via the email. We, had, we already had the mailing with this uh, list of documents, but you can see it on the slide on the right. Uh, so uh, it's your passport, it's a copy of your passport, a copy of immigration card and visa, uh, your voluntary medical insurance, um, medical certificates that you, I suppose, you already uh, prepared uh, during your enrollment process. Um, yeah, your vaccination records, two photos. And minors also should have uh, a copy of a parent's passport. Uh, please pay attention that all the documents and medical certificates must be translated into Russian and notarized. This is important. Um, as I already said, there is no option for early check-in only from August 28. So make sure that you um, that you book your flights on 28th of August or um, later. Um, so yeah, let's moving forward. Yes, and I would like to pay your attention on voluntary health uh, insurance for foreign citizens because it's a very important document. Uh, um, this insurance has to cover at least involuntary care, home health care, first aid, and repatriation. For more information, you can scan this QR code on the web uh, on the slide. Um, but later, my uh, colleague uh, Irene uh, will explain you more details about this voluntary health insurance uh, because uh, we have a special law here in Russia that you cannot just be in Russia without this insurance, medical insurance. You can choose uh, wherever you want, like the company of this insurance, Rosgostra, Riso, or so on. Uh, she will explain you later about this uh, medical insurance, particular uh, how to uh, how to do it, how to make this insurance while you're in your country. Um, yes, and in case you will have some questions, you can address these questions to my colleague Irene. She will uh, come here later. Uh, or to her uh, email. You can see it also on the screen. It's uh, ISSO at hc.ru. <laughs> yes, the next slide, please. Um, and uh, also, we, we would like to inform you about the migration registration for foreign citizens, because if you stay in the HEC dormitory, you need to um, do the some. Um, you need to prepare some documents uh, for uh, check in, and then to apply for uh, mig to migration uh, office for migration registration. You can scan QR code to read more information about this process. And uh, um, it's very important. If you will not stay in a GC dormitory, for example, you want to rent an apartment um, and you will live uh, at a private address, it's also very important to uh, do the migration re registration by yourself. Uh, you also will find the explanation of this procedure uh, by this QR code, the second one. And uh, please pay attention that migration registration is, extre is extremely serious. Please do not miss the deadlines because uh, in case you will have some troubles with migration registration, it will cause a lot of problems. Uh, you will be uh, expelled or even Deport. depart departed, right? 
from Russian from the Russian Federation. So that's why it's very important to follow all the rules to migration rules. And uh, wherever you have any question about your migration stay here in Russia, please address all this question to migration spv at hc.ru. You can see this email um, on the on the slide. Yes, it's very important uh, to like to keep in touch with this migration office of HEC because all your staying in Russia, legal stay in Russia will depend on them and on you also because you need to uh, inform them about your uh, location all the time. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's imagine that you already write in Russia. Um, that you have your visa, of course, successfully, and that you have all your documents, that you uh, check in in the dormitory. So what do you do now? Uh, you need to visit the study office of your educational program and bring them the documents. So if you are a state-funded student, uh, so you have Russian government scholarship, Mm, you need to bring to the study office the following documents. Passport with um, the original uh, plus copy of it uh, with, a, with, a cert, with an authorized Russian translation, mm -hmm. if it's necessary. Original certificate of education, uh, your university diploma, which you uploaded to the recognition, plus transcript and, uh, of course, notarized Russian translations. Scan copy of your migration card, um, which you received uh, uh, after crossing the borders of Russia, uh, and a copy of your entrance visa. Four photos, uh, all medical certificates, uh, and copy of your voluntary health insurance. So, um, what is important here? Uh, that in your migration card you have to underline studies as a purpose of your visit. Not tourism, not work, only studies. Uh, kindly uh, um, remember it. Um, okay, uh, let's move forward. Yes, and for fee uh, paying places, uh, for students who own a fee play, playing places, um, it's uh, kind of the same list of documents. Uh, you need also collect the documents all together and bring it to the study office of your educational program. Um, it's passport uh, and the scan of your passport. Actually, we recommend to do the copy um, of your documents, all your documents uh, twice, because uh, in any department they can uh, like require a, a copy of your passport. So just have it with you all the time. Uh, and the copy of uh, your uh, translation of the passport. Also, the original certificate of education, so diploma, school diploma, I, I don't know, university diploma, transcript, and also the translation of the documents, because they are fully in a different language and we need to have all of them in Russian too. Also, the scan copy of your migration cards that you will receive when you cross the border, and uh, for photos, um, also a copy of uh, VHI, so it's voluntary medical insurance. And uh, for fee uh, paying places for students on these places, we actually waiting you to sign your study contract in our international admissions office. Uh, we are located on Griba uh, Yadavai Canal channel. I don't know how to uh, and on the bidding on the building. <laughs> Two, three, yes, <laughs> office uh, 216. So please come and sign the agreement. Okay, let me just make some adjustments. Uh, if that if you're applying for bachelor's, if you're a bachelor student, bring with you your uh, high, high school diploma. And if you're applying for master's, it's your bachelor's diploma or master's, wherever you put on your recognition. And the second thing is that uh, you need to uh, bring these documents to the study office. Uh, 
only after they send you an email, only after the study office notified that you can come and bring them their documents. So it's not like the rush. It can be done during the September. So it's just for your information. Uh, yes, and about, this, about the study office, we already mentioned the study office before. Uh, how to find your study office, actually? You need to go to visit the website of your program, and on the right side, you will see the study office, some contacts, usually it's some people, some managers. You can write them. Um, I don't know, and they will also inform you later, I think before uh, September 1st, they will uh, inform you that they collect all uh, freshmen, freshmen, mm -hmm. right, yeah. together, and uh, you will come and bring all the documents that we mentioned before on the previous slides mm -hmm. all together. Yes, and just as a reminder, please do not write to the study office of your program right now, because you are still like... Uh, yes, not actually yes. their students. You will become students only after uh, September 1st. So right now, just forward your questions to us directly, as you already uh, did and do. And just don't, don't try to the study office right now. They don't know you yet. Uh, so let's not make any confusions. Okay. So here actually everything about our part, what bring with you visas and blah, blah, blah. Uh, here is our uh, contact. You already like know them. Uh, some links to our social media. So if you're not following our Telegram, please do. We post there many interesting and uh, crucial informations for international applicants. And let me just go quickly through the chat uh, to uh, just to answer some of your inquiries. So the first one is from Harish. Um, I have the visa number. Can I go apply for the visa? Because the faculty people told me to wait for the information. They will be sending me soon. Definitely you should, you must go and apply for the visa because visa referral number is also has some valid period. It's not like a year. So since when you receive it, just go quickly as you can to the Russian embassy in your country and apply for the visa as soon as possible. I don't know which faculty people you are talking about. If you have this uh, this email from them, you can forward it to us, to our general email or on my personal, and I will see this information. But I don't think that it, that it is come come from us. Uh, okay, so Tobias, uh, what should I do in my first day in St. Petersburg? Should I go to my accommodation or should I prefer the hostel? So, Tobias, as we already uh, talk about it, um, if you arrive earlier than August 28, you should definitely go to some hostel, some apartment, which uh, will make your registration, a valid registration in St. Petersburg. You cannot um, live in St. Petersburg without registration. It's uh, it is uh, um, not due to the migration law, and it is actually very might be very dangerous for you uh, to not be to not have a deportation from Russia. So, um, if you will arrive uh, after August or on August twenty eighth, just go to the uh, dormitory to to which uh, you will receive in a referral email. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be an address. You just go there and do not forget to send all the list of the documents to the migration SPB, which we already talked about. We will send all the uh, materials from this webinar on your emails. So you will have it with you and check uh, some procedures one more time. <clears throat> okay, Charles, my visa interview is scheduled at the end of August, but we are required to report between August. Mm -hmm. Can I report it today? Yeah, yes, you can. Um, you need to write to the accommodation department stating that you will be late for the check-in. That's totally okay. Um, 
I think we have this email when we do the mailing about what do, what documents you need to have before the check-in. But if you lost it, please write to our email and I will send their email to you once again and you will inform our colleagues that you will be late for the check-in. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nasir, I am a PhD candidate to study. Mm -hmm. So actually, uh, we do not deal with uh, PhD students here, only bachelors and masters, but let me write an email of um, Anna Talkachova, uh, who is in charge of PhD students. Uh, just a second. Okay, it's posted. So you can write to her and um, yeah, check uh, check about your uh, staying in Saint Pete. Uh, um, Mahmoud Hassan, yes, how to get voluntary insurance through HEC? We will talk about it a bit later. Yes, we can email this presentation and the record as well. Okay, Akbar, uh, probably you missed this email. Mm, so for you to check your visa referral number, write to uh, our email. I will send you the Russia Yedu number, uh, your email, which was registered on Russia Yadu, and you can check by yourself your uh, status on Russia Yadu and see if the visa referral number is already posted. Okay, embassy in my country wants enter and exit time to put in application. So how I will get it? I'm government. Mm, Actually, Mahmoud Hassan, I do not uh, quite understand what you what you meaning. Uh, talking about application, um, please send to our to our general email and just elaborate your request. So maybe we will, we will help you if we have more information. What if I come before twenty eighth? Uh, as I already said, just notify the um, accommodation department that you will be late for the check-in. Um, they will have the information. If you are late, that's fine. It's not a big deal. Okay, Zane, I submit my documents and got acceptance. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have such applicants which documents we accept, but cannot put you in uh, enrollment list. That's because we do not have your uh, ministry referral list, ministry referral document by now. It is fine. Uh, maybe you're an open doors winner or just like a regular applicant with a scholarship. Uh, for Not for all uh, applicants we we have this ministry referral. It's also up to the ministry workers. They um, appear one by one. So it's just like the process dealing with all of the applicants, international applicants who want to study in Russia. So you should understand the amount um, which, they, uh, which, which they work every day. So do not worry, just wait. When we will receive your ministry referral, you will be included in the list. Just uh, just check your visa on Russia Yadu uh, and do not miss it. So even if you are not in the list, you can still apply for the visa because it you know needs some time to be done. <clears throat> Okay, Akbar, I think I already answered it. It is a law at migration office to have a return ticket as a student if they will ask. 
You mean when you arrive uh, in Russia, you need to have a return ticket? Um, Irene, do you know such information? Uh, I don't think that it's deal with the purpose of uh, the study. Maybe it is actual for a tourist purpose. But if you came here for study and you have a study visa mm -hmm. issued by our university, I don't think that you need a return ticket. If you have some um, concerns about it, you can um, ask us to issue you uh, a letter of acceptance where we can state the period of your study. Sometimes it helps. I think most of the times it helps. Visa number has not been sent to me yet. It won't be sent to you. It will be appear on your Russia Yedo account as I repeated multiple times. If you do, know, do not know your Russia Yedo number, write to our email. You're welcome, Tobias. When we will be notified about our dormitories? Uh, it will start in August. So usually the beginning, the first part of the August, um, our colleagues start to, to send you your referral, referral documents to, to the dorms. Will it be necessary to inform the university while arriving? It, sure, we have uh, like a specific slide for that, uh, which states that you should notify the immigration department on the first very day of your arrival and send them uh, the documents. Uh, when does academic work start, considering that some of us will arrive late due to the late receipt? Usually the uh, study process starts on um, 1st September. This year, 1st September is uh, Sunday, so the 2nd September, which is Monday. Uh, actually, it is okay if you are late. Everybody understands that there is some visa, visa issuing, that you are... Um, uh, that your international applicants have some struggles to get here in mm -hmm. Russia. Uh, you can, uh, in August, you can notify your academic supervisor that you might late, might be late for the classes. Uh, it's not such a big deal. You won't miss much. Um, so just uh, keep an eye on your Russia yet yeah, visa referral number. So you won't miss um your um visa invitation and we won't um we won't have to re-upload for your visa once again which will like double the process in time how much time does it take to change the status from distributed to referral it's up to the ministry workers mm. We actually do not know uh, the exact date, the exact, the exact amount of time. It's uh, just happened while they proceed these applications of the international students. If it's not changed, let's, uh, let's assume like August, August 20, August 15, something like that. The vaccination site yellow fever, can you please tell us exactly what are this? Um, just like a basic, uh, basic list of vaccination that your uh, general medication organization can do to you. Like not only yellow fever, I think there is more uh, of them. Just check with your uh, local medical organization. Hello, how much are we expected to come with and how much is the insurance package? Okay, my colleague Irene will uh, talk about it just a bit later. I haven't received any email from Ministry, but my status has changed to distributed. Now, will it affect anything later on? I don't think so. Uh, 
base CDK, could you please write on an email? I think you've already enrolled, but I might be mistaken. Just write on our email with your concerning. Mm -hmm. So a really big email from Anthony. Can all medical certificates be captured in a signed document or do we have to present different certificates for each of the recommended medical certificate? It can be captured in one. Can I be checked in into the HC dormitories if I arrive after checking? Yes, you can. For some of us, that translation is not done in our country. We send documents to friends in Russia to translate for us and we are given only soft copies of the translated documents upon arrival in Russia. Do we have to submit hard copies of translated documents or would the soft copies be enough? Uh, if you mean in the soft copies is like a scan, like a PDF scan, no, you need to have like it on paper, just print this PDF scans, it will be fine. The dormitory do not need your originals, right? Please inform us about the particular vaccination inside the yellow. I think I already answered for it. When will the arrival date section open? Uh, it is uh, closed for everyone. We wait for our Moscow colleagues to open it. So it's like a technical issue. Will the education referral be shared by the university or will have to request it? What do you mean by education referral? Please elaborate. How can I enroll for Russian classes at my department? Well, it will be it like an issue for, for a later case, don't you think so? So maybe in September or October, you can contact your study office and ask about it. How much time embassy required to process visa application? I don't know, actually. I would love to answer it, but I do not know. Just check your Russia Yedu profile regularly, like every day. As I know, notarization is required for documents that are translated into another language, that is correct. If I have medical documents written in Russian, do I need to get them notarized? No, if your documents are fully in Russian, you just present them as they are in Russian. And I have one more question on the website. It appears that dormitories owned by HEC are only provided to those who have received full scholarship. Yes, in my case, I have received 50% scholarship. Can I still be provided with accommodation? No, uh, you will be provided with our rented apartment accommodation. Um, so, yep. Okay, hello, Daval. Um, as a arrival documents, medical documents are accepted, which we submitted in offer of admission or... Yes, uh, the document, medical documents, which you submitted for enrollment, um, for admission, it's, they are fine. Uh, their valid period is one year. So uh, if they're still valid, it is okay, you can use them. Is it possible for one, to defer admission with scholarship to the next academic year if they don't get visa early enough. You will get the visa uh, anyway. There is no need to like postpone your admission. And actually we do not have such an opportunity. If you decline your, if you cancel your scholarship place this year, we won't, well, it, it not, um, go for the next year. So if you want to apply next year, the process will start all over again. For those of us that are fee paying student, would there be full tuition refund in case of visa refusal? I do not remember the case of visa refusal as I working here like for three years. So I think it's not the case. Uh, which email should we contact for third admission letter? Our general email, which you see on this slide, I admissions is PB. Daniel, I already asked. 
that we do not have the exact date when you will receive this visa referral number. Just check it regularly. Wow, we're on the bottom of the chat. That's great. I just received my visa number, but all the appointments date in my country has been booked for now to August. What do I do now? Go in August to the embassy. Maybe check uh, checking if uh, they can accept you without um, without the booking appointment. Maybe it is possible. Does university pay rubles to students who has extracurricular activity certificates? Um, I don't. You know, we have some kind of a scholarship uh, for students. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think you need to check it uh, after, after in September when you're already a student, when you already have a student status, check it with the study office. Um, because for every scholarship, there are like some different requirements. Yes, we will send you a recorded version. Can you please tell me what that while applying for visa, where we can get contact of studies? And this is the requirement of embassy. So do we need to buy from home country? Regarding the insurance, we will talk about it a bit later. Contract. Uh, as, a, as a scholarship holder, you won't have any contract kindly keep it in mind. There is no contract for, for scholarship holders. Your tuition fee is free. There is no needing in contract. Uh, basically, uh, the embassy just will need your visa referral number. You can actually show them your profile in Russia Yedo, where you have your status like distributed and blah, blah, blah. If you have, if you sure that you need uh, a lot of acceptance, from the university, just write to us. Hello, is there any program for the fully funded scholarship student to learn the Russian language? Or how can HEC help the student to learn the Russian language? This is a question for uh, for your study office. So in September, when your study will begin, you can uh, write to them and ask. Oh, you should uh, medicine certificate in March, as well as other so for admission, so if will be six months over, so it will. Yes, I said that your medical certificate valid period is one year, so six months is fine. Are there subsequent scholarship opportunities for fee-paying students? Uh, for fee-paying students, uh, this is a question for your study office. So again, later. In September, when you already have your student status, write to your study office. What is the amount of monthly stipend that student get on fully funded scholarship? Uh, it will be around 2,000 uh, rubles. Actually, it will be enough to cover your uh, dorm living, uh, door living for a month. Okay, so guys, so many questions, but we have uh, another part of our webinar. So, um, uh, so let's just uh, let me invite my colleague Irene, uh, who will tell you more about the Russia culture, the Russia, the Russian details. Okay, <laughs> Irene, you can see. Uh, let me put the presentation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Xenia. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Irene. I work in the International Student and Alumni Center. And I will tell you about amputation support, health uh, and safety uh, at HC University and in St. Petersburg uh, specifically. So, uh, first of all, our center um, is uh, tasked 
with uh, helping you understand confusing processes, uh, we will be happy to direct you towards the correct resources and departments or university or city. Uh, we are also uh, busy uh, making events for you in the, within the walls of our university as well as um, in the city and uh, beyond the city of St. Petersburg too. Uh, so we create and share uh, our own events as well as uh, events by the city administration or other departments or student clubs that you might be interested in and uh, will help you um, get um, together with uh, other students and find new connections. Uh, we can help you solve difficulties you may face that you're having trouble with dealing yourself. And of course, we help you discover Russian culture, food, people, customs, and much, much more. A couple of words about Russia. Uh, Russia is a multinational country. Uh, here live uh, 200 plus ethnicities that speak more than 100 languages. Uh, Russia is a secular state, which means there is no state religion, uh, although 70% of Russians identify as Orthodox Christians. And the second most popular religion is um, Islam, with 10% uh, of Russians roughly uh, practicing is Islam. Um, Russia is home to 30 UNESCO World Heritage Sites uh, and uh, the center of St. Petersburg itself, not just one building on one museum or one street, to the entire historical center of St. Petersburg is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And uh, of course, the only official currency or within Russia is the Russian ruble. First and foremost, let's talk about medical insurance. Uh, it is of primary importance uh, to you right now uh, and uh, during your life and studies in St. Petersburg and in Russia. Uh, by migration um, law, uh, you are obliged to have a valid medical insurance throughout your entire stay in Russia. Um, a lot of uh, links uh, within my presentation that will be sent to you, of course, are clickable. So there are hyperlinks embedded as well as QR codes accessible to you. If you click on them uh, or scan them, uh, you will be directed to the um, corresponding website. Um, and on the page dedicated to the medical insurance, you will find uh, the requirements for the policy um, since uh, so if you follow this link uh, you will see um, instructions on how to obtain a medical insurance policy uh, you can either uh, get acquainted with the requirements and uh, refer to a uh, medical insurance company of your choice we do not uh, forbid that um, or alternatively, you can fill in the form on the same website. Uh, this form will go to our insurance agent that uh, we collaborate with from the Veska insurance uh, company. So uh, fill in uh, that form and uh, you, you will be contacted by um, HC University's uh, partner uh, agent. Um, medical insurance uh, ensures uh, that you are provided uh, medical help um, and uh, it's covered by your insurance. Um, I don't even want to think about extreme situations, but uh, it's uh, vital uh, that you have a medical insurance. God forbid anything happens and uh, you don't want to, the financial burden uh, of it to be on your shoulders and the shoulders of your uh, relatives and clo uh, close ones. That's why it's uh, of primary importance to have a valid medical insurance all the time. So since it uh, can be uh, trouble, troublesome to purchase a medical insurance from Russia while you're not in Russia yet, uh, uh, here is the, um, the formula that we propose uh, for your first week in Russia. Please purchase a uh, traveler's insurance in your home country. Um, imagine you are going to any other country 
uh, you have the option to purchase a tourist insurance. Uh, this is the type of insurance you can purchase uh, already now. Um, when you know the co concrete uh, date of your arrival in Russia, please go and purchase the insurance that will cover your first week in Russia. And during this first week, you are obliged by law and uh, as well as HSC internal regulations to go to our website, get acquainted with the rules, with the requirements, and purchase the medical insurance for the entire upcoming year. Three red exclamation marks uh, for you to remember to buy medical insurance. A few more words about health. So uh, foreign citizens uh, while in Russia are provided with medical help on a commercial basis. So if your tooth hurts, for example, you go to a um, dental clinic and you pay for the services. Or if you have a medical insurance that covers um, dental work, uh, you uh, refer to your insurance um, company uh, and find out which dental clinic they cooperate with and which one will cover your, uh, for example, dental works if we are using this example. So that's why you want to have a medical insurance. Yeah. Uh, urgent help, however, in a life-threatening situation will be provided to you as a foreign citizen for free. So what does that mean? If, um, God forbid, uh, you um, have an open um, fracture of uh, a leg, uh, let's um, suppose that, uh, somebody calls an ambulance and you will be helped. Uh, the ambulance will uh, transfer you to a hospital and will treat your wound uh, for free, but uh, further uh, recovery may already not be covered by the government of the Russian Federation. That's why you need to have a medical insurance to be uh, able to um, have uh, it covered uh, financially by the insurance company. You don't, you don't want uh, that burden. Uh, and since uh, international uh, money transfers uh, are troublesome nowadays, um, you need to buy medical insurance. If you are uh, staying overnight at a hospital, if that happens, uh, please remember that uh, you will be uh, registered at that hospital uh, because it's your place of stay for that period of time. Uh, when you um, are out of the hospital and return to your dorm or to your apartment that you are renting, um, you are obliged to re-register at that address. If you are living in the dorm, you will re-register with our um, Center for Visa and Migration Support. If you live in a private apartment, you will register with the owner of that apartment. Um, and also let us know if you are at a hospital so that we can uh, track you and check whether everything is okay. Uh, please be prepared that in Russia, various health certificates are often needed for different purposes. For example, accessing the university gym, um, or staying at the dorm. Um, these certificates often are not, uh, cannot be um, substituted for one another. So uh, it is a part of the bureaucracy, but it's for everybody's uh, safety. Uh, so what to expect in terms of weather when you're coming to Russia? Maybe some of you have been to Russia before, but uh, it may be quite a shock to you um, weather-wise. St. Petersburg is uh, quite rainy and uh, humid. In summer, the temperature can range from plus 10 degrees Celsius to plus 30 degrees. At the moment, for example, it's closer to the 30 degrees. Uh, and in winter, it may vary. Uh, so winter can turn out to be uh, relatively warm it being uh, zero degrees minus five degrees or plus five even or it can be a cold uh, winter uh, temperatures going down to minus 20 degrees celsius uh, always check the forecast because a sudden rain is um, uh, very very usual in st petersburg carry an umbrella with you or a raincoat 
And uh, since St. Petersburg is uh, so close to the um, North Pole, we have a weather phenomenon uh, called white nights where during the summer months, uh, the sun doesn't um, set, uh, stays up for a very long time. And uh, on the left, you can see a picture of a 1 a.m. Uh, so it's a very beautiful sight. Um, I'm jealous of you uh, to be seeing it for the first time in your life. Uh, but uh, these uh, white nights also mean that uh, during winter, uh, the sunlight window is very, very um, short. So uh, it gets dark uh, quite fast. And uh, during those times, you may feel down. It's quite a big change for some. Um, you may uh, feel less uh, energetic and uh, even down, so just be gentle to yourself. Um, uh, take your vitamins and uh, listen to your body and be gentle uh, to yourself. Uh, in terms of clothing and accessories, uh, you will need a winter parka or a puffer jacket. Uh, you don't have to bring it from home, but you will have the opportunity to buy it uh, here in St. Petersburg. Um, a must-have is a hat that covers your ears, uh, mittens, of course, an umbrella and or a raincoat. Um, during winter months, uh, it's important to wear layers. And in Russia, it's customary to uh, change uh, from your outside shoes uh, to slippers inside. So, for example, for example if you live in a dorm, um, you will be obliged to wear slippers. Uh, and for visiting the common um, shower, for example, uh, it is useful to have resin slippers as well for those purposes to stay hygienic. Yeah, Tobias is writing. I'm gonna need new uh, good boots for winter and snow. Brazilian shoes will not suffice. That's correct. Um, the weather in Russia is quite different to that of uh, Brazil. Um, so you want to bring to Russia, of course, of course, all of your documents in original and copies, like my colleagues have mentioned. So it's your passport with your visa, tickets, the medical certificates. Uh, you want to bring charged devices uh, and a power bank, a charger, and if needed, an adapter. So Russia uses type of sockets. You can see it on the picture. Um, you may want to take with you the toiletries that you need uh, on the first few days. And after that, you will be able to buy, to go on a shopping spree for personal care items. Um, it may be useful to bring something that will remind you of home and uh, perhaps even some souvenirs for your new friends. Uh, because guys, I will talk about it later, uh, we have uh, volunteer programs for international students. Uh, those are our experienced students that can help you out uh, during your first days uh, with tasks such as buying a SIM card. And even though it's not obligatory, but uh, I'm sure they will be uh, super grateful uh, um, if you bring a, a small souvenir for them, but of course that's just just an idea. It's not uh, necessary. Um, when you come to Russia, you will need to purchase uh, towels, uh, food, of course, pots, pans, and cutlery, cleaning supplies, and warm clothes because those items are not uh, provided by the dorm. Uh, the cost of living, uh, you can um, uh, gauge how much money you will spend uh, per month using the Numbeo website. It's very useful. We share it all the time. Uh, and for our outgoing students, uh, we we'll go to other countries on exchange too. Um, the public transport system in St. Petersburg is well developed. We have a subway system, trolleys, uh, buses, trams, etc. Um, you will receive at a later point, so uh, closer to the end of September, probably, a student transport card. It will have a monthly fee, uh, a reduced fee for students. Uh, but uh, when you come to Russia, uh, during those first uh, weeks, uh, you need to buy 
a podorožnik um, in the subway. There any took a office in the subway at any station. Uh, this transport card works like a deposit and uh, you can um, transfer any uh, sum of money on it and uh, it will uh, be uh, cheaper uh, than paying with a card constantly. We don't. Uh, we recommend to download the Yandex Maps uh, app in advance. Um, it's a Yandex is a Russian, uh, huge Russian uh, IT company, and their maps uh, work great in Russia. They have the most um, up-to-date information. Uh, Google Maps, for example, is worse uh, and uh, may have old or or, or uh, insufficient uh, information. One of the thing, one of the things that I hear the most is that Russians don't smile on the streets, and that's true. But it does not mean that we are angry or um, unfriendly. The second uh, thing that I hear a lot from uh, foreigners is that Russian go Russians go out of their way to help you, uh, especially strangers. Uh, they have they may have no. Um, grounds for it, you may think, but they just go out of their way to uh, help you out. So do not be afraid if you're in public um, to ask for help. Uh, luckily, we live in the age of uh, technology where you can use uh, real-time translators, uh, text-to-speech, etc. So even if you don't Russian for now, um, you can still get by. And Russians, some Russians do speak English. It's not uncommon, uh, especially young people. Um, so you may also come across uh, a person who is fluent. But of course, it's useful to know the basics uh, that will get you further in life even, uh, such as hello, здравствуйте, sorry, извините, thank you, спасибо, goodbye, до свидания. Um, and uh, another point uh, is to respect personal space in Russia. This is just how we are. We don't really um, love to um, people for people to invade our personal space. Um, yeah, that's just something to be wary of. Uh, Kair Muhammad, uh, there may be an issue on your end uh, because, um, yeah, everything works works for everyone else. I think you may want to refresh your uh, website. So uh, the fun part, uh, the food uh, in Russia. So what is it like? Uh, it may seem bland for people who are used to spicy food. Um, but uh, I assure you that uh, all kinds of spices are available for purchase in our uh, supermarkets and shops. Um, university canteens offer vegetarian options too, and uh, they are typically marked with green um, uh, color. Uh, and another point is to not be scared again to ask a student nearby for help, identifying what kind of meat that is. If that's important to you, don't be afraid. Um, grocery stores are open all day and some are even open 24 seven. That's another great thing um, about living in Russia, the services. Uh, there are a lot of options for affordable food delivery as well as grocery, grocery deliver, de delivery. Um, and be ready to find your new favorite dish. Our international students especially love pilmeni, which are like dumplings, sirniki, with a, which are cottage cheese pancakes of sort, pushki, that can be compared to donuts, but are not quite like donuts, blini, pancakes, and um, borscht, which is a beetroot soup. Uh, here you can access the virtual tour of the buildings of St. Of Petersburg um, um, HSC. Uh, 
may be very useful. There are short interviews with uh, students, with the faculty members and the international students too of previous years. Uh, you may have a tour of a, one, one of our dorms and all of the study buildings. Again, uh, a lot of the links, uh, a lot of the pictures and um, writings are clickable uh, in my presentation. Here you can explore uh, the capacity of library and what the gyms are like, the cafes and canteens in, in our university walls, as well as co-workings and recreations. Student life is very vibrant at HC University. Uh, here I have mentioned just a few um, of our clubs. A lot of them are clickable again. So if you're interested in uh, exploring nature, speaking uh, Arabic or Russian, uh, we even have a sailing club, a music club, of course, a lot of sports and art. Board games club, uh, debate, cyber sports, uh, volunteer core, all of that will be accessible to you. Uh, my biggest advi advice is to be um, engaged uh, in extracurriculars. Uh, this will ensure uh, you find new friends based on your interests and will not feel isolated or bored ever. Uh, when living in a dorm, uh, you may uh, want to know what is provided there. So in the dorms, there is a laundry room. Um, in the kitchen, you will have a stove, a fridge and sink, a microwave, dining tables, of course, and kitchen cabinets and storage. Um, in your um, bedroom, you will have a bed provided, tables, chairs, closets and shelves, uh, blankets, pillows and bedding. Um, you will have uh, study rooms as well as recreation spaces, uh, Wi-Fi and cable internet. And all of HC dorms are um, have 24-7 security uh, and uh, controlled access. You won't be able to access uh, without a student card. Um, and uh, you may have guests over, but only during the day, and those guests will have to provide an ID. Sanitary conditions and tidiness in the rooms and kitchens uh, are upheld by students according to the duty schedules that they um, make. Please be respectful of each other, keep the noise down, smells to a minimum, and uh, keep your place tidy leave the washroom clean after you use it. This will ensure uh, that uh, you don't have any um, personal um, troubles uh, between uh, the neighbors and this will help you focus on your studies and your um, extracurricular life instead of those issues. Uh, here I would like to share uh, two student organizations that deal with international students. First one is International Student Union. Uh, you can click the name to go to their website later on. Uh, they make events for international students, uh, such as tours to other cities, karaoke nights, tandem meetings, workshops, or visits to animal sh shelters. They will have a uh, welcome, uh, welcoming meeting uh, uh, at the beginning of the study year. To so that's where you will able to meet each other. They also have a buddy program. Uh, so those are student volunteers that can help you out during your first weeks in Russia uh, and tell you more about Saint Petersburg and HC. So. Uh, if you leave uh, a request for a buddy now, you will be, uh, they will get in touch with you later in August, so please be patient. Buddies, um, if they're available, they can meet you um, in the airport if it's not during the night, because buddies are just people that also need to sleep. Uh, they can help you um, get around the city, they can show you the buildings of HSC, how to get to them. But uh, buddies, uh, like I mentioned, do not work during night hours. They don't become your full-time personal assistant. Um, and they don't help you with migration and academic issues. 
These are to be addressed exclusively to international office or the study office of your program. Please remember that all bodies are volunteers. They are not paid for their services, respect their time and personal space. All bodies are human. They may make mistakes and are not almighty. In case of any inquiries on the work of bodies, contact International Student Union via VK. In case of any issues that require HC University uh, involvement, do contact us. Second organization, um, not second um, importance wise, but just second, uh, just by numbers. Association of International Students uh, is a platform that unites international students at University of St. Petersburg. Uh, they have a team of tutors who are second year students that help first year students to adapt to HSE. Uh, you, if you have not been contacted by them yet, you will be, 100% will be contacted by them. Um, Association of International Students holds events such as the Big Culture Day, with, which I recommend everyone to participate in. It's a day where you can present your own culture as well as um, uh, get a taste of other cultures at the HC University. <clears throat> they plan film nights, national celebrations, uh, hometown meetings, if that's possible. I will. And uh, there will be more to follow on Orientation Day that will happen on the 30th of August. Please don't worry if you don't make it uh, to Russia on before 30th of August. We will uh, record the Orientation Day and we will have a lot and lots of events coming up uh, later in the year. So you will get a chance, chance to participate in one of our events, um, that's for sure. It's all up to you. So please stay updated to uh, our social media, which is available here on Telegram. It's a different channel than that of uh, admissions. Uh, our channel is dedicated to um, recommending events, HSC and in, um, in the city, as well as sharing tips on life and studies. You can also visit our website and don't hesitate to um, contact uh, our center if you have any questions about life uh, in St. Petersburg or the medical insurance. Um, that's uh, the end of my presentation. Let me go over the chat to see if there are any uh, questions for my section. So uh, there, are, there is a language, uh, there is a Russian language course at HC University. You will have the opportunity to apply for it when you are uh, here uh, and you can address that uh, request to your study office in September. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so as for how much money to bring, you decide that for yourself, you can use the Nambeo uh, website that I shared in the presentation. Uh, this will get, help you understand uh, how much uh, you may want to spend uh, um, uh, in Russia per month. Uh, as for camping and adventure trips, the list is endless. Uh, so you may uh, email uh, ISSL and uh, uh, we can share some uh, interesting sites for now. But yeah. Um, as for opening uh, a bank account, um, yeah, uh, so for example, your buddy uh, or someone, you maybe you know someone in Russia already, so maybe someone is meeting you here. Uh, you can go to, um, uh, somebody mentioned Tinkoff, uh, T-Bank is now called, um, it's changed its name. Uh, yeah, that's a good option. I use uh, services of those bank, that bank. There is also Sber, S-B-E-R, it's uh, the biggest Russian bank, uh, their cards are um, available also. Uh, halal food uh, is available um, in the city, we have a lot of um, 
Muslims in uh, St. Petersburg and uh, there are shops uh, that sell halal food as, as well. And was uh, the costs of the medical insurance are available on the website. There is an Excel fi file uh, on that website. You can check it out. Uh, which date is the perfect date to fly for St. Petersburg? So the uh, you can uh, check into the dorm starting 28th of August. Um, 30 of August is the orientation day, so 28th uh, is uh, perfect. Yeah, ways. Uh, I'm glad you found this session helpful. Um, I'm excited to welcome you in St. Petersburg and at HSC. Um, Danielle, so uh, as for the international transfers, uh, you may want to ask for advice of uh, other students. Unfortunately, we do not uh, uh, have any spe specific uh, procedure for transferring money from other countries to Russia. That's, um, yeah, it's very uh, specific to each country. Uh, I'm glad you guys are uh, talking to each other in the chat and connecting. Uh, that's great. Um, yeah, mutual help uh, between students is awesome. So that's it for my part. I don't see any more questions. Um, colleagues, if you want to uh, add anything. Okay, guys. So uh, we almost run out of time. Mm, in 10 minutes, we will end the webinar. So, Irene, as I understand, there, there are no more questions, right? Oh, yeah, there is some uh, connecting. Mm, so, okay. Um, just let me once again show the slide with the contact. Oh, no, I can't do it. Well, okay, so um, just in case, if you have any questions regarding your admission, you all know our email. Let me just put it once again uh, in the chat. Um, so, yeah, guys, this is it. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you for your activity. We will send all materials and the recording. Um, uh, via your emails so let's keep in touch and once again if you have any questions don't hesitate to contact us by email okay guys so please have a nice day and yeah we will meet you in st petersburg